I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Good morning, faith family and friends. Praise the Lord, faith family and friends. Are we ready to lift up the name of Jesus? Amen. The word said where one or two, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. So let us prepare for worship this morning. Let us quiet our spirits because there's so much going on in the world today. And let us forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him in spirit and in truth. I ask all who are physically able to please stand as we affirm our faith this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in seated in the presence of the Lord and led in praise and worship. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire and the praises of your people as we lift our hands, lift our voice as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. Welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people as we lift our hands as we lift our voice as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. As we offer up the sacrifice of praise. As we offer up the sacrifice of praise. There is no one like the Lord that we serve. And he does do miracles. So great. And now the altar is open for you to come and have a little talk with Jesus. And let him know about the issues 
on your heart. The word of God said for those to come boldly to the throne of grace. So the altar is open for your individual prayers. And then after you have your individual prayers, we will pray collectively as a body of, of Christ. There's power in the body of Christ. Amen? Please remember those on the prayer list. Would you please bow your heads and pray along with me? O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name above all the earth. You are our guardian and shield. O oh God, our protector who keeps us from falling. You surround us with righteousness that wards off evil forces. In Christ is the assurance to withstand ways that may tempt us. You shower us with your mercy that cleanses wrongdoing. Your temper, judgment with compassion. We stand in adoration and praise of your name. Father, please don't take your hand from us. Because without you, we will fall and stumble. But what we ask is that you lift us and carry us on the path towards righteousness, not for our sake, but for thine. Father, we want to thank you for having the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to thank you for allowing us to see the rising of the sun and the going down of the same, knowing that you are worthy, worthy to be praised and to be lifted up. Father, we have shared the issues of our heart. You know everything about us. And we pray that you meet us at the point of our needs, Father. If we need peace, if we need healing, if we need deliverance, if we need direction, 
If we need your provision, we know it can come from thus, says the Lord. We can't do it all by ourselves. But with you, all things are possible through Christ that strengthens us. Help us to re remember the strength and the power that you give to each and every individual. And as we come together as the body of Christ in unity with one mind and one focus, and that is to lift the name of Jesus and to help those that need a helping hand and to pray for one another and to lift one another because you created us to love as you have loved us. So have your way, sweet Holy Spirit, in this place, in the hearts of your people, so that we can be encouraged to take the light out into the world and shine light on dark places, letting everyone know that there's sacred worthiness in every soul. So let the songs of Zion be a healing balm to our brokenness. Let the spoken word touch our heart to make us want to be better, stronger, and wiser. We want to thank you for our provisions of shelter, food, and clothing. But most importantly, we want to thank you for your unconditional love towards us and for giving us of our shortcomings. Because the word said that every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. The battle is not ours, but it is yours because you are the one who's strong and mighty in battle. And we ask this in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. And the church of God said, amen. Good morning, people of faith. You are watching Faith TV and I'm your host, Delana Gilmore. Thank you for joining us for this worship experience. Whether online or in person, we are so glad to have you here. And now for some faith news and notes. Our church council meeting will be on Monday, July the 10th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is 880-3552-4684. The passcode is council. Email DickinsonFaithUMC at gmail.com so we can have your correct contact information and keep in touch. Submit your prayer request to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash prayer. All requests are confidential unless you would like them placed on the prayer list. The Avesta Project Pantry Hours are on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. This pantry is solely supported by faith members, so thank you for your continued support of this much needed ministry. Our summer feeding programs, Kids Cafe and Kids Packs are up and running Monday through Friday. Breakfast is at 9 a.m. and lunch is at 12 p.m. Bible study is on summer break and we will resume Bible study after the week of Labor Day. And finally, a message from Pastor Walters. She would like to say, thank you for your hospitality and grace in welcoming me as your senior pastor and my family. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. To God be the glory for the things he has done and doing for Faith United Methodist Church and family. Well, church family, as always, there's a lot going on at Faith. Be sure to check the website and follow us on social media. That's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your service. Amen. I really do want to say thank you so much for the hospitality that you have extended to me and my family. And I just want to let you know that faith, we love you and we thank God for you. And I'm, I don't see any first time visitors or do I see a first time visitor? Well, we welcome you. And I see some Familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while, so we welcome you back home. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. The only additional announcement I would like to share with you is that there's some materials about how to prepare your plan for hurricane season. And preparation pays off. 
So please make sure you get those guides and there's some plastic bags for you to put all your important papers in so that if you have to evacuate, you can just pick up and go. Amen? All right. Now we are going to continue to worship the Lord in music. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands before you. Bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. Bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. Bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. Bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 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 The storms keep on raging in my life, and times it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, I hope the lies with. Is reassured as I keep my eyes upon that distant shore. I know he'll take me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. If the storms don't cease, and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been a God in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in 
my life And times it's hard to tell The night from day So the hope that lies within Is reassured As I keep my eyes upon that distant shore I know he'll take me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease And if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been a God in the Lord. Oh. We're gonna be tossed by the wind and the current that seems so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor that keeps me steadfast and unmovable. Despite the tide, but if the storms don't cease, and if the wind keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been. A God in the Lord, the Lord. Mm -hmm. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My, 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 my soul. Breakers may dash. Billows may roll. I will not sway. Cause he holds me fast. So dark the day, clouds in the sky, but I'm not worried. Cause Jesus is not in my soul. My soul, my soul, my soul has been a God in the Lord. Amen. And now it's time for the offering. I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank you for continuing to give during this time. This is how the work of the kingdom still gets done. There are multiple ways to give. You can still send a check in the mail to 2205 Avenue G, Dickinson, Texas, 77539. You can still come by and drop off your offering on certain days when we are here. We also have online giving. If you go to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash donate, Donate. You can see the ways that we will be able to receive your seed online. We also have PayPal. Dickinson Faith UMC at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. We also are able to take giving through the app Givelify. If you search for Faith UMC Dickinson in the app of Givelify, you will be able to find us and you'll see a picture of the church right on there and you'll be able to give. We thank you for continuing to sow a seed into God's kingdom. Amen. We ask a blessing upon the gifts and the givers. 
We ask a blessing over those who are able to give and those who are not able to give. And we ask that this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, faith family and friends, it's time to get into the word. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is coming out of the gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. I will be reading to you from the New King James Version of the Bible. And I ask all who are able to stand in reverence to God's holy word. Thank you. And it reads, but to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourn to you and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he was a demon. He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. Verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I th thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father God, we come ready to hear what thus says the Lord. Open up our hearts and our minds to the power of the Holy Spirit that the scriptures read and discussed will be heard with joy what you will have for us today. For we are faith and love and action and the hope of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are truly our strength. You are truly our Redeemer. And the church of God said, Amen. Church family and friends, for the time that is ours today, the title of the sermon is My Yoke is Easy. There are times in this life when you say, Lord, help me to hold out. It seems as soon as you get one thing done and off your list, here comes something else. There seems to be one thing after another, with little time of recovery, we keep asking God for his grace and his mercy to see us through everything that we are experiencing. When God answers and sees us through, there are those who are happy and satisfied. 
But sometimes there are some people who refuse to be satisfied. In our gospel lesson, Jesus is talking about a contrary generation of people who will not respond because of this reason or that. He said they are like children in the marketplace who don't want to play together and be on one accord. Jesus said we will play a flute and you do not dance. Usually when a flute is played, it's played at a joyful event like a wedding but yet they did not dance. He said, we mourn and you do not lament. Weeping and wailing is what you do at a funeral, but yet they did not lament. Whether the situation be happy or sad, the children, the people refuse to play. You had the best preachers in that era, John the Baptist and Jesus, who messages are still just as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago when they first spoke to the first century Christians. But the people of that day and time were contrary and did not want to accept their preached word. John and Jesus' approach and message to the people meant that they would have to change the way that they lived and treated one another. John the Baptist was the final messenger promised by God to prepare the way for one greater than he. John the Baptist was stern, disciplined, a threatening figure. Some people wouldn't listen to him because his message was too hard. Fire and brimstone drew some people, but it repelled others. John chose a life of poverty and was true and a dedicated disciple of God. He knew what discipleship is and what it was. He wore camel hair clothes girded with a leather belt and he ate wild honey and locusts. And he ate locusts, can you believe that? He lived in the wilderness alone and basically survived off of the land preaching to the people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Few people would want to live like John lived then and they wouldn't want to live like John lived now. Because they, the people, didn't want to receive the message that he had to say. Jesus said they said he had a demon. Now we have Jesus, who was the expected coming one. Jesus had a blatant disrespect for the scribes and the Pharisees, the keepers of the law, of God's law. You see, they started concentrating more on the law than focusing on the God. We get tied up in bureaucracy and sometimes we lose our focus. That's why we have to make sure we concentrate on him, the God of our salvation, and look to him for our direction. Now, Jesus has performed miracles and wonders, even on the Sabbath, where the people bear witness of his power. His disciples are not careful in their observance of the law, and Jesus defends them. The Pharisees were more concerned about why the disciples didn't wash their hands prior to eating. They wanted to know why Jesus harvest grain in the field on the Sabbath because the disciples were hungry. Our God came to provide our needs according to his riches and glory anytime, anywhere. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad, church, that we have a God that is loving, 
that is kind, that is compassionate. What made matters even worse was Jesus associates and dines with the tax collectors and sinners. Aren't you glad he dines with sinners? Because all have fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus came not threatening anyone, and the people rejected him because they, the people, thought he was too soft because we had a God that came to love. We had a God that came to heal. We have a God that came to deliver. We have a God that came to forgive us and reconcile us back to the Father. Yet the Son of Man is the Son of God. So they call the Son of Man a glutton and a wine bibber. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In the eyes of the Jewish religious leaders, everything about Jesus seems to move in the wrong direction because he attracted great crowds, tempting them to join his ministry. The root problem for those who reject Jesus is their awareness that taking John and or Jesus seriously requires that they change their lives. Both John and Jesus moves us and pushes us to the point that we are uncomfortable. Because if you're going to do what God has asked us to do, you got to go to some places you ordinarily won't go. Knock on doors, not knowing if you will be received or not. But the word said to go and do the work of the Most High God. Jesus warned them not to turn people away because their message was not pleasing. He challenged the people to be more discerning. The call for discernment and response of this generation is needed. And today, the call for discernment and response is needed in this generation. Because church, family, and friends, as much as you love the Lord, there are so many that don't know them. We have generations that won't know them. So we must do what God has called us to do, which is to discern the process. And discernment means that you are looking for spiritual guidance. And when you pray to God and he answers, it may not be the way that you want it to be, but that is the way God wants it to be. So we must act. As Christians, we are called to seek and utilize discernment. We are called to look at the good world God has created and pursue his goodness and his godliness. The discerning sets his face towards wisdom. But the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. But wisdom is justified by her children. This meaning of this proverb is much the same as by their fruits you shall know them. Church Christ is wisdom. In him are hid treasures of wisdom. The saints are the children of God that God has given to Jesus, which is you and me. The gospel must go forth. The gospel is wisdom and is the wisdom from above. True believers are wise children, wise for themselves and their true interests, not like the foolish children at the marketplace. This is important because Jesus gives us free will to choose if we will follow him or not. That's a loving God. That's a God of compassion. That's a God that wants that true intention that's in your heart. That's the God that wants the best that he can get out of each one of us. For those that heard and got the word, Jesus proclaims that he gives thanks to his father. 
And in our text, Jesus prayed to his father. I thank you, father, Lord of the heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. See, the religious leaders of that time were so full of themselves that they were so much into the law. They weren't into the spirit that God wants us to have, which is to love him and to love one another. And thanks be to God, some of those wise Pharisees and, uh, did get to know Jesus, but the majority did not. Those who heard and accepted the preached word are not the wise and the intelligent, like the Pharisees, scribes, and rabbis. They are learned and well-educated people, but they got caught up. While the wise and prudent men of the world are in the dark about the gospel mysteries, even the babes in Christ have the sanctifying, saving knowledge of them. The people who accepted Jesus' teaching and preaching were the infants, were the new believers, who were hardworking, everyday people. The poor in spirit, who experienced the divine revelation given through the grace of God. For blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus is the beloved son who is an, in an intimate relationship with his father, declares to us it is the divine initiative of the father who has given all these things to the Son. It is declared in our text that God gave everything to Jesus, everything he needed to Jesus, and that he is his Son. And the Son is recognized by the Father, and the Father is recognized by the Son. And he will reveal those who are ready to receive the goodness of God. Jesus extends to all, the poor, the rich, the lost, an invitation. When Jesus invites us to take his yoke and to learn from him, it is as if he is giving us access to the finest equipment and the best coaching for the game of life. Amen? So accept the invitation and rest. It doesn't mean that your life is going to be all smooth. But what it does mean is that you will never be forsaken. God will take every step with you. He will make crooked places straight. He will show you the way that leads to life, an abundant life, a life abundantly filled with all his graces and his mercies that are renewed every morning. And he does this even when we don't deserve it. That's how much he loves us. He gives us that Peruvian grace. But church, we got to move to that sanctifying grace. Hallelujah. Because he has justified us by our faith. But it's now time to learn as much as we can and grow as much as we can so we can do as much as we can. It is hard to be here in the house of the Lord seeing people come in every day hungry in America the land of milk and honey, but the hungry. It is hard to see our young children not having what they need, can't even get off to a good start because they don't have the things that are needed to support them. That's why we, the church, have to know why we are the church. We have to make God a priority, not sometimes, all the time, because I don't think he cut off your oxygen. What if he said, no, nah, don't think so, but he doesn't, and he does it day after day after day, time after time after time, but he's a patient God. 
He was patient with me. But the thing is, church family, we don't have that kind of patience toward one another. And we must. Because there's something so much bigger, so much, so much bigger than ourselves. Because if the church would be the church, if each one would just reach one, our world would be different. The word said, come to me all who labor and of our heavy laden, and he will give you rest. When you rest in Jesus, it's like a rest you never experienced. Where you have a peace, you have a restful sleep, you have a peace of mind. Women, our minds go 24 7, even in our sleep. But I'm telling you, God can give you the rest that you need. But you gotta take up his yoke. And you gotta learn from Jesus, the one who, the divine who came and put on flesh and dwelt among us. He showed us the way. All he said was to imitate. You may not know everything, but all you got to do is imitate. Our children Im imitate us, don't they? Behavior is, it catches, doesn't it? But all we have to do is just start taking that action. And I guarantee he will open it up. Because if he opened it up for one, he will open it up for others. He said he is gentle, lowly in heart, and will give you rest for your soul. The king of kings was born in a lowly manger. Why? Because he wanted everybody. You can't just tailor God's plan and God's work to one set of people. It is for everyone. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Speaking as the embodiment of the divine wisdom, Jesus invites and extends to all who are burdened down. We are called to take up the yoke of Jesus Christ to give hope to the hearts of everyday people. The yoke in our text is a symbol of relationship with Jesus Christ. When we come together to worship, we come together. When we are, and we are not alone, but a part of the community. Added to that, of course, is the intimate and personal relationship that we have with Christ. It starts one-on-one, -on -one, then it gets bigger as all the ones come together because iron sharpens iron. That is why the assembly of the saints is so important. You don't have to know it all. You just have to have a willing heart and a willing spirit. A yoke usually joins two oxen to work as a team. And that's what he means by this yoke, that we're under the gospel so that we can love one another and work together. Because the body needs all parts. One part can't be greater than the, the other. It takes all parts for the body to function as one. When Jesus invites us to take the yoke and to learn from him, he is inviting us to join him in that harness that is specifically made for you. Amen. To allow him to take the lead, to let him help us through the difficult places, to give him the opportunity to show us how it is done. Take the yoke of the righteous one, for it is easy. Jesus is saying that the Christian life is both a yoke that is easy to bear and a life of demands too heavy, too heavy to bear alone. As we hold on to God's unchanging hand, as we anchor our souls in the Lord, as he helps us to hold out, as his grace and mercy sees us through, grow in Christ, grow in discipleship, take up the yoke of Christ, for he will make your burdens light. Hallelujah. Lord, help me to hold out. 
Lord, help me to hold out. Lord, help me to hold out until my change comes. My yoke is easy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the word of God goes forth, there is always a response. But at the end of each service, we open up the doors of the church. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, the, great base, the best time is now. Amen. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. But if you do know him and the pardon of your sins, and you're not connected to a church family, well, we know a wonderful place in which you are able to come and that's Faith United Methodist Church. And there are many ways to connect to Faith United Methodist Church. You can text to 281-336-1698. You can call us at 281-337-6036. You can send an email to DickinsonFaithUMC at gmail.com. And you can even inbox us on Facebook, amen? But the most important thing is to become a part of the body of Christ. That will be the best decision, lifelong decision, not only for your life, but for your children's life and your children's children's life. That's the kind of God that we serve. He just won't do it for you. It, it just grows, builds momentum. But it has to start with you, freely. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to assemble once again in your name and be in your midst with your spirit. Father, help us to freely take up the yoke of Christ so that as we go through this journey of life, the demands, that you will make it lighter for us. You have never forsaken those that are called in your name. And Father, it is our desire to call those that don't know you into your midst so that they can experience the abundant living in you. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus, the risen Christ, our Lord. And the church of God said, amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. God is a good God. And we're going to be tested because we were tested today, were we not? <laughs> but God's agenda will go forth regardless. Amen. So I ask all who are physically able to please stand as we have our benediction. May we live out the word that we heard, receive all that we prayed for, and be blessed so that we can bless others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father, God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace.